Deuteronomy. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. But if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Most High to observe and do all his commandments, then curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these lies and delusions Wake me up, show me a new dawn Open your eyes out the ways of the heathen to make a covenant with Satan's government turn their face away from the most high evil desire second king 17 said they passed their sons and daughters through the fire they begin cutting divine spiritual ties clinging to the heathen lies evil spirits bind breaking souls breaking spirits ripping flesh breaking minds running from the most high wrath on the bloodstained path 70 AD Israelites fall the most high's chosen seed to captivity, he blew Israelites, watch nations rise, they watch nations fall, four beasts, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, we pray for the fall of the four beasts, under the iron foot of Rome, we long to go home, a hopeless nation lies dead in the valley of the dry bones, simulation, simulation of Shemites to Hamite clones, Israelites roam.
Yeah, yeah. PMH. PLA. The last album. We in the last hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They say forget God, but that's my missionary. When they say FG, I'm out of venetary. Why do they treat us so bad? 
It's gotta be something deeper. Deeper, it's gotta be. Have you ever wondered why they massacre our brothers? They cause us to hate one another. To make it hard to come together. all this confusion and start a spiritual movement so we can turn back to our God. Why do they Ooh. treat us so bad? Why? Why do they do things just to make us mad? Make us mad. Why do they treat oh my God. us Why? so bad? It's gotta be something it's deeper. Gotta be. Deeper. It's gotta be. Could it be the melon? Deeper. Could it be that we're stronger? Could it be our women? Deeper. What, what could it be? Could it be our rhythm? Deeper. We got so much abilities and so many enemies. Deeper. We've been through so many pains. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, somebody please tell me what's going on. Cause we can't even get some coffee. And we can't even watch a movie. We can't even buy groceries. Guilty walking, so they shoot us in the streets. We know the hate is really deep. We gotta be the chosen people. We've been through so much evil. I feel it in my soul. They kill us in our homes. I feel it in my soul. Deep down in my soul. Just the mere sight of us brings fear. And all it really takes is to have a conversation about the truth, about who we really are, and accept it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here with the uh, class I was looking for. Um, I was looking for this out that I have of like the divine, the divine salutation so that I could read it and you guys could follow along, but I don't know where that is. I just reorganized some things on my computer. So, um, I don't have that with me tonight. I have to find it. And, uh, once I find it, we'll... Maybe I'll add it in after the fact, but not before I edit the videos or put them on, uh, before I put them on YouTube. But anyway, um, I'm not okay. Okay. Uh, so, so, so normally we 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 would do that before the class, and um, saving ourselves from that tonight. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, just the divine salutation here. I mean, just the, the uh, sorry, just the uh, raising of the ark. Let me find a good version of it here. A lot of things on here that are, uh, okay. Let's raise the ark. We'll go to 
go to the Bible here and do it. I'm notorious for having a bunch of tabs open on my computer. So um, these are just a few tabs because I, I try to close them every once in a while, but it's, it's a lot of tabs on there. All right. So it says here in Numbers 35. And it came to pass when the, when the ark was set forth, when the ark set forward, that Moses said, rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee from before thee. So we have here, um, starting at the Kuma, Kuma Yahuwah. We are Fusu Oiveha, we are Nusu, Missaneha, Nipaneha. Ma Yahuwah, we are Fusu Oiveka, we are Nusu, Missaneha, Nipaneha. Rise up and let your enemies be scattered and let those that hate thee flee from before thee. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go right into this uh, lecture tonight um, because there's a lot that I want to cover and I've only given myself about an hour to, to get through it all, maybe an hour and a half, depending on my audience and what what we what we kind of go off into tangents on. You know, we kind of do tangents. I don't mind the tangents. The tangents are good for getting a good understanding. So the 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 premise of this lesson today was somebody asked me to prove or to explain why I say that. African Americans and the people of the diaspora, why we are not the tribe of Judah, but why we are the tribe of Ephraim or the tribe of Joseph, the many thousands of Ephraim. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and I want to make sure that it's clear we are not Jews, we are Ephraim, the many thousands of Israel. So let, let's highlight that. To highlight that for emphasis sake, we are not Ephraim, um, we are not Jews, we are Ephraim, we are the many thousands of Israel. So as we go forward, my my burden is to prove to those of you that are listening that we are not the tribe of Judah, but we are the tribe of Ephraim. Yes, and I'm going to say again. Oh, it here. Okay. Okay. You know how we do in class. So if 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 you are I have I have trained myself to listen for uh comments or concerns. So if mm -hmm. it, the same is true for tonight. Okay. If you have a question, just please interrupt me because otherwise I'm just gonna be talking to myself on through the computer. And oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I appreciate the questions because those questions will help other people um, it, as they come in and listen to the class. So um, I don't mind the inter I, I really don't mind the interruptions. I, I welcome them. So just don't don't feel bad. Um, okay. I, somebody I, I, has their hand raised. That's that's Nalo, and I wanted to just find out from you if you were, were able to see it. So I'll raise my hand if I have a question. That's, that's good. Okay. Um, so it says patterns of evidence. It's very important that we understand patterns of evidence, right? And the language of the Abrahamic covenant. Now, one of the first things that we do, we learn as kids, one of the first things that you learn in like pre-K or, or kindergarten is pattern recognition. And pattern recognition can also be, be called foreboding or predestination or even prophecy because if you can identify a pattern then you can predict a behavior and this type of foreboding 
is very important when we're dealing with scripture because the Bible says there is no new thing under the heavens. And everything that happens was a forewritten or a forementioned in the Old Testament. And so we have to go into the scripture and find these patterns. And once you find these patterns, these patterns are predictors of future behavior. So and we're going to talk about some of these patterns tonight. So patterns of evidence sp dealing specifically with the language of the Abrahamic covenant. Why African Americans are not the tribe of Judah. We are not Jews. We are the many thousands of, the, of Israel. It says, who told you you were the tribe of Judah? Maybe you just want to be Judah. Oh, uh, it's okay. I'm going to see if I can mute everybody. Here we go. Okay. Who told you you were the tribe of Judah? Maybe you just want to be Judah because the Khazar Jews have claimed it. Let's look at the evidence and show the proof of who Judah and Israel are. In this course, Judah, the southern kingdom, Israel, the northern kingdom. Let's jump right into it. We want to deal with the language of the birthright. Coming from Genesis chapter 2. And I highlighted a lot of this stuff in, in, in subsequent verses, so you'll see it. So in Genesis chapter 12, we see this language, right? I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Unto thy seed will I give this land as an everlasting covenant unto thy people forever, right? For all the land which thou seest, the, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make the, thy seed as the dust of the earth, right? The many thousands of the frame, right? So that if a man can number the dust of earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. So all of this language here is language that we're going to see in the language of the birthright the language of the Abrahamic covenant. Um, and I, I use the language of the birthright and the Abrahamic covenant interchangeably, and maybe I should just call it the Abrahamic covenant because that is the birthright that's being passed down. So I'm going to copy that because I, I need to make sure I uh, put that in places where it's supposed to be. All right. So here's all the language of the Abrahamic covenant. Now look at this. Reading from Genesis 17. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And as, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be as a father of many nations. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting in bold here the language of the Abrahamic covenant. And of course, this is a video, so you'll be able to pause this and go back and read those verses uh, at, at a later time. Neither shall I call thy name any more Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Uh, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. This is actually the name of Ephraim right there. I will make nations, plural nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. It was very interesting that uh, the, the, the descendants of Esau were not called kings, they were called dukes. Very specific language being used there. I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. See, all this language is repeating. And I will give unto thee and to that see after thee, the land, right? We talk about the land where thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan. This is what's going on right now where they're fighting over. For an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. This goes into, um, we can even put right here in parentheses, Hosea chapter 1, verse uh, 6 and 7, right? Where he says, uh, I should call her name Lohuhama. And lo, I mean, for they are not my people, and I will not be their God. We're going to talk about that today. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, 
Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and I see after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you, and I see after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So we talked about all of this language that we can identify as the language of the Abrahamic covenant. Still working on the premise of identifying patterns, okay? We got to identify the pattern. Now, part two of this is, part one was Yah passing the, Yah establishing the covenant with Abraham. And because it was a birthright, uh, the covenant had to pass down to his son. Most of the time, inheritance was given to the elder son. But as we're going to discover today, this inheritance is always given to the second son, the younger, which is another pattern. So the birthright passed to Isaac. And God called the name of his son who was born from Sarah Abraham, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son the eighth day as God commanded him. And God said unto Abraham, let not it be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right? So Abraham was feeling a certain kind of way because of Ishmael, his eldest. And so Yah tells him, send Ishmael away because I'm establishing my covenant in Sarah. And there was something very special about Sarah that was going on that we're going to talk about in a little bit. That is another pattern. So the next chapter says, "In that blessing will I, I in that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven." We've seen that before already, and as the sand upon the sea shore, right? They shall possess the gate of their enemies. These are all languages of the birthright, of the covenant. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast opened my voice. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. All right? So it, this is very abbreviated, right? But we can see in this language, Abraham did not use this language when he blessed Ishmael. Abraham use this language when he gave the blessing or when he passed the birthright to Isaac. So from using this language toward Isaac, we know that Abraham passed the birthright to Isaac. Now, the blessing of the birthright foretold to Rebekah. The same way the angel came to Sarah, an angel came to Rebekah. That's a pattern. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, this is her family, her family before they sent her away with uh, Abraham's servant. And they said unto her, thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of the enemies or those which hate them. Right? We, we, we say that in our Raising the Ark all the time. Another pattern of evidence. Right? Another pattern of evidence. Even when we load the ark, we say, Shuva Yahuwah, return Yah unto the many thousands of Israel. Not the many thousands of Judah, but the many thousands of Israel. Right? And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Now, who else was barren? Wasn't Sarah also barren? Sarah was also barren. So Sarah could not bear children. Rebecca could not bear children. And it says, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca, his wife, finally conceived, right? And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. So here we have another pattern. Abraham's eldest son was not chosen, and his younger son Isaac was. I, Abraham's wife, Sarah, was also barren. And here we have Isaac was given the covenant. Isaac's eldest son will serve his younger son, and his wife, Rebecca, was also barren. So we have a pattern establishing. Genesis 25, 
31 talks about why we should not despise the birthright that was given to Israel. So many Hebrews will say, well, well why can't we be Judah? Blah, blah, blah. It's not about which tribe it's from. It's about despising the birthright. Esau did not contest his lineage or who he was. Esau sold his birthright. And because he did not place enough value or significance on the birthright, the Bible says that Yah despised him because Esau despised the birthright. Yah in turn despised him. So by us denying or refusing to accept that we are Israel in lieu of being the more favorable Judah, we are also despising the birthright because the covenant was not passed to Judah. We are not the children of Judah. We are the children of Israel. So we cannot afford to despise or to give any room or doubt as to whether or not we despise the birthright. It says Genesis 25 talks about why we should not despise the birthright that was given to Israel. We despise it today by calling ourselves Judah when the birthright was clearly given to Israel. And that's going to be uh that's going to be Jacob Joseph and Ephraim. Jacob, Joseph, and Ephraim. Knowing who Israel is is important for understanding how the birthright is inherited. But we will talk about that some more a bit later. All right. So we're going to go into that a little bit. Yah reaffirms the birthright in Isaac. Genesis chapter 26. And the Lord appeared unto him, Isaac, and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I tell thee of. Same thing he told Abraham. Sojourn in this land, I will be with thee, will bless thee, and unto thee and to thy seed will I give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. It's the same language. You'll hear that throughout this whole presentation. It's the same language being spoken. And anybody whom we claim has the birthright or has the covenant, you have to show in scripture how this Abrahamic language was used with them. You want to be Judah? You say Judah is the, the main tribe? Show me anywhere in scripture where anybody uses the Abrahamic language when talking to Judah. We're going to talk about Genesis chapter 49. That's where a lot of people get messed up. We're going to talk about it. It says, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven unto thy seed all these countries. In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And all this is from Genesis 26, 5, 2 through 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He did not use this language when he blessed Ishmael. Yah did bless Ishmael, Ishmael, but he did not use any of this language when he blessed Ishmael. He, he told Ishmael what? You will have, you will be the father of many nations, but that was it. There was no other repetition. <laughs> Jacob receives a covenant. The Abrahamic birthright language used right Jacob receives I should say I want to make this congruent Jacob receives the birthright the Abrahamic covenant language covenant language used Jacob receives the birthright and re remember uh Sarah Sarah received a prophecy about uh, Isaac being chosen. Rebecca also receives prophecy of Jacob being chosen. Remember, she can she asked Yah while the children were fighting in her womb, and Yah says, two nations are in thy bowels; one will serve the other." So Rebecca knew that Jacob, the younger, was going to be the child of the promise. 
And Rebecca heard when, when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. And, and Esau went to the field to hunt the venison and to bring it. And Rebecca spake to Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau. So she goes, uh, we skip down. Uh, Rebecca makes the savory meat and she goes and makes the food for Isaac. They cover Jacob with the with the lamb skin or with the, the skin of the goat, right? And then it says, uh, the neighbor, then, then Isaac blesses Jacob, right? He says, therefore God give you the dew of the heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's and let thy mother's son bow to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. So even though the language of the birthright is abbreviated in this scripture, it doesn't go through all the language. We can assume that Isaac uses all the language when he gave the birthright to Jacob. It was not to be taken lightly. Let's see if Isaac uses the same language when he does finally bless Esau. Let's see if we can find any language. And you can do the same thing with uh, Ishmael. So here's where Isaac blesses Esau. And let's see if we find any of that language. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fattest of the earth, and all the dew of heaven above from above. And by the sword shall thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And the question is, do you see the covenant language anywhere? Do you see the covenant language anywhere? This is what's going on right now with, uh, with, with, the, with the Jews, right? The Edomites, they call them Edomites. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew from heaven. By the sword shalt thou live. That's why there's no peace in Israel. And shall serve thy brother. This is coming. This is coming. All right. Isaac reaffirms the birthright in Jacob. All right. Genesis chapter 28. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him, saying, So now at this point, Isaac has accepted the fact that Jacob so-called stole the birthright. I don't like to say he stole because Jacob purchased it and it was given to Jacob by pre or by predestination. So he didn't really steal it. It was it was preordained to go to Jacob. Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Right? This is something that Judah does. Judah took a daughter of Canaan for his son Ur, and then for his son Onan, and then after he didn't want to give him Shelah, then Tamar had to go and trick Jacob, had to go and trick Judah, but she was a Canaanite. She was from the daughter of Canaan. Uh, her, name was, her father was Shua. No. Her father was, can't think of his name, but uh, Jacob's first wife was also a Canaanite. Maybe that's what it, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Judah's first wife was named Shua. Yeah, Shua was the daughter of uh, an, an Adulamite, uh, and he was a Canaanite. So, anyway, God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful, right? Which is the name Ephraim, right? And multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Isaac is reaffirming the birthright in Jacob. Never uses his language with, with Esau. And given thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger. We saw that too, which God gave unto Abraham. The word stranger, this was also used. For thou art a stranger. Yah reaffirms the birthright in Jacob. 
And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, thy father, <clears throat> and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Um, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So here's that same language Yah uses with Jacob. All right. Rachel, to say Sarah, Rachel, and Rebecca. Okay, and Rebecca were barren. Here we have uh, three generations of women whose sons became the inheritors of the covenant in all three of these generations. Abraham's wife, Isaac's wife, and Jacob's wife, all three of them were barren. And he went in and also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. It's like Rebecca, just like Sarah. Judah was a descendant of Leah, and she conceived again and bare a son. He said, now I, pray, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left barren. I added this in just to show that um, the promise went to Ephraim or Joseph, and Joseph was a descendant of Rachel. So Joseph is the next repetition of the pattern and not Judah. Now watch this. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. So here's the word add. Uh, it says here, uh, Ikra, right? Vatikra, right? And she calls Et Shemo, his name or the name of him, Et Shemo, Yusef. Yusuf, le amor, right? Le amor, uh, for she said, Omer, le amor, for it was said, Yusuf, Isha, yo, right? So here we have Joseph and Joseph again. Thought that would be interesting. Thought that was interesting that the name Joseph, the only difference is this Joseph has the vibe in there, but it's still Yusuf. Joseph. So the adding or the many, right? It says multiply, right? This is that same repetition of language. Joseph's name means to multiply or to add. This is a repetition of that pattern, that Abrahamic language. All right. Jacob receives a new name, which is Israel which is attached to the birthright. And I have this uh, all capital because it's very important. The name Israel is attached to the birthright, not Judah. Judah is a name, but the name Judah is not attached to the birthright. That's why we say, Shuva Yahuwah Rivavo Afe Israel, and not Shuva Yahuwah Rivavo Afe Yahuda. That's why Jesus or Yeshua, he says what? I am not come, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He didn't say of the house of Judah. He said of the house of Israel. Yah called his name Israel. He says, I have given you my sir. I have surnamed you. He did not surname anybody with Judah. He surnamed the children of Israel with uh, the, the children of Jacob with the name Israel. So you have to understand the name Israel is greater than the name Judah. And we have to reverence that name because Yah says what? Holy and reverend is my name. We have to reverence the name Israel because that was the name that he gave us. He did not give us the name Judah. And in Genesis 32, and he said, 
Thy name shall be no shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with man. The man shall rule with Yah, right? Ish. Ish is the word for man in Hebrew. Ra is rulership. And now is God. El is God. Israel. Israel. He shall rule with God. He shall rule with El. Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. So he changed his name to Israel, and Israel is the name that is attached to the covenant. God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful. I, Ephraim, Ephrati, be fruitful and multiply yourself. Add a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. This is that coat of many colors. This is that Bantu migration and all those different Bantu tribes. All of those are Joseph. And you gotta, you gotta understand. Joseph was given the prophecy of the grain and how the abundance came into Egypt. And the shafts of wheat, I'm getting ahead of myself, but all of these, all of these symbols and the symbology of fruitful and multiplying was attached to Joseph because it was the promise that Yah gave to Abraham. And each one of those descendants, as they got the birthright, as they received the covenant, it was reiterated and it was reaffirmed in each one of those generations until it was fulfilled in Joseph. And that's why it's important to know who Joseph is. Um, and the land, should be a space right there. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee. He's, he's telling us to Jacob. Right? And God went up from that place where he talked with him. Rachel dies in Ephrath, and, and they journeyed from Bethel. And there was but a little way to Ephrath, and Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was hard labor, uh, Rachel died. I'm going to skip down. For she died. And she called the name of the son Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died was, and was buried in with Ephrath, right, which is Bethlehem. And we're going to come back to this in a second, and I'm going to tell you why. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You have a question? All right. When you were explaining about ish, meaning man, and fruit, there there was, it didn't come out very clear. And I, I tried to get your attention earlier. Oh. But would you explain that again sometime um, before you sign off? I'm going to explain it to you right now. So this, this word, Israel, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go to where he calls his name Israel. I want to go to where Israel is mentioned here. It says, but Israel, all right? This is uh, H uh, 3478, right? And he, here we have the breakdown of Israel, right? Yeah. Israel, right? Look at this. From the word, from the word uh, H 8280, which is Sarah, a sar, right? right? Sar, to have power to contend. So we have in the in the kingdom we have a leadership group called sars, right? You yeah. have the nasiks, then you have the sars, then you have the atours. So mm -hmm. sar is uh, the name of Sarah, right? And yes. the masculine form is sar. So. The name Jacob, or the name Israel, is a makeup of three words. Ish, right? Which is he, or man, the man. Yeah. Right? Sar, 
which is right here, sar, which is a minister or rule, because the ministers have rulership, and then el, which is the name of our, the name of God, or it means power. So here we have power. God, power, mighty, goodly, great, idols, Emmanuel, might, or strength. So he shall rule with power, or he shall rule with God, is what Israel means. Right. And, and so for all those, for all those, uh, for all those people that, I hate to say it like this, but my, my they, used to, they used to always say, would you want to be smart, dumb ass, right? <laughs> you want to be smart, dumb ass, right? You hear people say, oh, the name Israel is three idols. It's uh, Ishtar, Ra, and El, or Baal, right? And, and yeah, that, that sounds smart to somebody who's unintelligent. But when you can speak Hebrew and you know what these words mean in Hebrew, and you start to look at the, the names of these people in the Hebrew, then you can't pull that over on somebody like me. Right? Ish. Right? Just like the word, even if you wanted to say, how do you say there is in Hebrew? Yes. All right? There is yes right there. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Then sar, there is power with L, or there is power with God. He shall rule with God, or there is power with God. No matter how you break it down, you can, Israel, that it is a divine name. Mm -hmm. There is something holy and magnanimous about the name Israel. And this is why, for one, it's mentioned throughout the scripture, and why, too, why we need to reverence the name Israel over the name Judah. Mm -hmm. Not to say that Judah isn't important, and we're going to talk about why Judah is important, but we need to reverence the name Israel. Does that answer your question? Hold on. Yes, yes. Okay, absolutely. All right. <clears throat> Rachel dies and Ephra. All right. Well, we mentioned this before, um, before we go into this, Dukes. Uh, and Rachel died and was buried in the way of Ephrath. Now, this here is what I told you in class. Um, this here is called an anachronism, right? An anachronism is where something is mentioned out of time or out of this proper time on the timeline. And so Ephraim and Ephrath were not called by these names during the days of Rachel. They were called by those names afterward. But the writer of this scripture, the scribe or whoever retranslated this, uh, they put the name Bethlehem and Ephrath in there so that the readers of it would know the place where it happened. And it's significant because it is also the place where Rachel was buried. It's also the place where, well, it's the place where Joseph, it's the place where uh, Benjamin was born. It's the place where Rachel was buried. It is also the place where Joshua, son of Nun, in the book of Joshua, who was a descendant of Rachel and Ephraim, he gives this land, Bethlehem, to the tribe of Ephraim, okay? Uh, it's also where David was born. It's also where Jesus Christ was born, right? It is where the wise men went to see the baby Jesus. It is where Herod killed all the Hebrew babies in Matthew chapter 2, verse 18, where it says Rachel mourns for her children, right? And believe it or not, Bethlehem in 2023, as of this date, there are no Jews in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is in the West Bank. So believe it or not, from the moment this scripture in Genesis was written, from the moment Rachel died, if we could get a time machine and go back to the day Rachel died, from that day up until November 3rd, 2023, no Jews have ever lived in Bethlehem. 
And that's a powerful statement. No Jews have ever lived in Bethlehem because Bethlehem was given to the sons of Rachel who were Ephraimites. Even today, in 2023, the people of Bethlehem are Palestinians because Bethlehem is in the West Bank. And I have a picture here. Um, where can I show this picture? I have a picture here. Right here. Look what it says. This road leads to Area A under the Palestinian Authority. The entrance for Israeli citizens is forbidden. It is dangerous to your lives and is against the Israeli law. You have to pass through one of these signs when you go to Israel if you want to drive into Bethlehem. Bethlehem is under the Palestinian Authority, and no, no, no Jews, no Israelis can go into Bethlehem. And even further, if you want to get technical, the first king of the kingdom, when, when Samuel was entreated by Yah to make a king, he appointed Saul. Saul was a descendant of Rachel through Benjamin. And then, of course, Saul became wicked and Yah appointed David. David, according to 1 Samuel 17 and 12, was from the, was an Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, son of Jesse, which was Ephraim, which was Joseph, the son of Rachel. And then, of course, all of his descendants, David's descendants, became the rulers of the southern kingdom of Judah and Rehoboam. During the split, Rehoboam became the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, and he was from the tribe of Ephraim. So if you want to get technical, Rachel's sons were, Rachel's sons have been the only kings over the nation of Israel when it was united and when it split in two. Only Rachel's sons were ever kings of the two kingdoms. We have to appreciate the significance of that. Only Rachel's sons were rulers, were kings in Israel. Saul was a descendant of Ephraim. Oh, Saul was a descendant of Benjamin. I'm sorry. Saul was a descendant of Benjamin. And then David was a descendant of Bethlehem, Judah, an Ephrathite, Jesse, and um, Jeroboam, Rehoboam were also descendants of Ephraim. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just want to throw it out there. All right. The descendants of Esau are dukes and not kings. And you can go through this on your own and see that all of Esau's children were called dukes and not kings. Further, further removing Esau from the prophecy. Further removing Esau from the prophecy, his children were called dukes and not kings. This was done on purpose as further proof that Esau does not fulfill the birthright promise language. Um, kings being his descendants. All right. The preordination of the tribe of Ephraim in the northern kingdom of Israel. They were preordained. It was predestinated. It was, predest it, were, it was predestined that they would be the northern kingdom of Israel. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and made him a coat of many colors. Now many colors could also symbolize many nations. Many nations, many tongues. Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. They already hated him because he was his father's favorite. So this is uh, 
Ezekiel, I want to go put this right here real quick. Ezekiel 37. I don't know the I don't know the verse, but it's Ezekiel chapter 37, where um it says the envy, the envy of of of, of Ephraim, right? The envy of Ephraim. Now we always read this verse and we say, oh, see, Ephraim was jealous of Judah. No, that's not what the verse is saying. The verse is saying the envy of Ephraim, the, the, the people that envy Ephraim, that envy will depart. Let me show you. Ezekiel 37. Uh, it might not even be here. Um, it says, moreover, son of man, take one stick and write upon it for Judah and the children of Israel, his commands, and take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Um, I think it's, I think it's in, uh, even, I think I know where it is. It is going to be in Isaiah, Isaiah 11. So Isaiah 11 and 13, it says here, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So this here is a mistranslation. The Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And, and somebody will say, oh, well, that's convenient for you to say that it's a mistranslation because you want to prove your point. It's like confirmation bias. Well, the question I have for you then, those that say that is, show me anywhere in scripture where Ephraim or where Joseph was envious of, of Judah or any of his brothers. Nobody can show me in scripture where Joseph was envious of Judah or any of the other brothers. So when it says the envy of Ephraim, this is talking about the people that envy Ephraim. That is the envy. They are envious of Ephraim. They are envious of Ephraim. And that's the envy that's going to show, that's going to depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be envied by Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Ephraim shall not be envied by Judah, because there is no scripture in the Bible. Show me a place where Ephraim ever was envious of Judah. And you'll say, oh, well, when the, when the kingdom split, Ephraim didn't want the, the Hebrews going into Samaria, leaving out of uh, the northern kingdom to go to Jerusalem. And that's why he set up the capital in Shiloh. And let's say, you know, we can argue that. If you like, we can argue that. Uh, I'm not saying Rehoboam was justified in doing that. But there is no scripture where Ephraim envied Judah. So um, we're, we're still talking about the preordination of the tribe of Ephraim, right? Or Joseph. Joseph dreamed a dream. So behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. This is synonymous with uh, Jesus, right? Feeding the 5,000. What do you feed them? Seven loaves of bread and two fish, right? This language is repeating through all scripture. Seven loaves of bread and two fish, right? And lo, my sheaf arose and stood also upright, and the other sheaves round about made obeisance to me, right? Remember how there was a famine in the land of Egypt, and they had to go into Egypt to buy bread and grain? Who did they meet? They met that sheaf. The stone that the builders refused, right? All of this language is messianic language. All of this covenant language is, is Joseph, and his brethren said to him, "Shall you indeed reign over us? Shall you have? In, shall, shall you indeed have dominion over us?" And yet he dreamed another dream and told it to his brethren and said, "I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me." Right? Is there any prophecy that reveals or suggests that Judah would be the father of the tribe of promise? Right. 
Genesis chapter 38. There is no extraneous passage in scripture. Every verse in the canon is, is there for a reason. This is the story of like Perez, Judah's uh, son, and how Tamar was promised Ur, and then Ur died because he was wicked, and then Onan was wicked, and he didn't want to, Judah did not want to give Tamar Shelah, right, which was his third son. And so Tamar went in and had uh, relations with Judah and, and had Pharaoh, Paris, right, or Paris. And uh, Ferris, um, he was born a twin, right? And his brother, uh, what was his name? His brother's name was Zarah. Zarah, right? And Zarah, he put his fist out of his mother's womb and the midwife tied the, she tied the string to it and then he pulled it back. And then Ferris came out first. And he says, the lady says, how did you come forth before your brother who put his fist out? And so Ferez means he who came forth or he who him to who him to whom it belongs. He who came forth, which is um, the he's a, he's the ancestor of the Messiah. So this is a Genesis 38 is a good passage to start when we want to talk about the Messiah's pedigree because Ferris is the father of Hezron, and Hezron, or the Hezronites, were the um, were the pedigree of the Messiah. So a good chapter to read. Genesis 41 is the story of Joseph and how he interprets the dreams and everything goes on that way. We're going to jump down uh, to Genesis chapter 48, because this is where the birthright is bestowed on uh, Joseph. And there's something very curious that happens in this, in this setting. So we're going to read this. Genesis 48, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to pause for a second and grab some, some mine because I'm got a lot. It's a dare. This is very interesting. Here we go. What are y'all for mine? Mine is just nice cold glass of water. Always does it. Hey. <laughs> okay. Right, here we go. So, Genesis chapter 48 and the bestowing of the Abrahamic birthright to, to uh, Joseph. Now, um, if we follow the chain of custody, all right, um, if we follow the chain of custody of the promise, of the covenant, it went from Yah to Abraham then Abraham gave it to Isaac. Isaac gave it to Jacob. Jacob, right here, Jacob is going to give it to Joseph, but he's going to give it, he's going to give it to Ephraim through Joseph. So Joseph doesn't really have to uh, repeat this language to Ephraim. Joseph's father, Jacob, passes it on to Ephraim. So here's where we see it. It says, and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, behold, thy father is sick. And he took his two sons with him, Manasseh and Ephraim. I have this underlined because I want you to notice Manasseh is older than Ephraim. Manasseh is the elder. Ephraim is the younger. Some people say they were twins. I don't find any scriptures to support that they were twins. It says that Manasseh was older than Ephraim. Now, even if they were twins, Mm -hmm. Manasseh came out first. Okay. So even if they were twins, Manasseh is still older than Ephraim. And mm -hmm. one told Jacob, now watch this. This is very interesting, right? And I, I, I've always, I've asked people to explain to me why it does this. And of course, uh, nobody that I've debated about this wants to tell me why this chapter does this, but we all know why it does this. 
What it does in Genesis 48, it uses the name Jacob and Israel interchangeably. Mm -hmm. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. Why is it using the name Jacob and Israel? Mm -hmm. The reason is, is very obvious. The name Israel is connected to the birthright. Mm -hmm. The name Israel is connected, is linked to the birthright. Let's consider why the writer of this chapter interchanges the names Jacob and Israel. Notice also that Manasseh is older than Ephraim, but Jacob sets the younger over the elder in the same fashion as Isaac over Ishmael, as Jacob over Esau, and as Joseph over his brother. So we have the same pattern of behavior throughout four, five, six generations. This continuation of the birthright tradition is a pattern that we can identify just like the covenant mothers of being barren, Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel. We don't know about uh, Joseph's wife with the Potiphar's daughter being barren, but we know that Sarah, Rachel, and Rebecca were barren. You know, Rebecca was the Rebecca was said to be barren in one little verse really quickly, and then she had a baby. And people have overlooked. Even me, I've been in the church 39 years, but it's been in the Bible. And when I found out that Rebecca was barren, I said, What? I thought she was having trouble too. I didn't even see that she had been barren. Mm -hmm. Genesis 48 and 3. And Jacob said unto Joseph, There we go with Jacob. He go from Israel. Back to Jacob. God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. Hold on. This is that same covenant language from the beginning of lesson. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful, Israel. How did Joseph, how did Joseph know to name his son Ephraim? Mm -hmm. Genesis 48. Watch this. If we go to Genesis 48. Open some new tab. If we go to Genesis 48. And we go to verse 3 and 4. I will make thee fruitful. You will find fruitful. Look at this. I will make thee fruitful. Mafrika. Mafrika. Right? Ishraim. Right? You see it right there. Mafrika. Mm hmm same root as Ephraim. Right? He says, I'll make thee fruitful and multiply thee. It will make thee multiple the people. This is like the coat of many colors. Right? Those Bantus from the Bantu migration, all those different tribes that come out of the Bantu migration, including us. Right? And will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Um, let, let me let me let me detour for a second. I want to show you something. We'll say map of Bantu migration. Watch this. If we go to a map of the Bantu migration. It says, I'm just choosing a random map now. It says the Bantu migration started here, where in the Niger River. And graduated and, and, and gradually went over into East Africa, does Kenya, Maasai land, and down into South Africa. So all of these different nations have Bantus in there. Mm. This is the land of the Niger Congo, where they also came and got slaves. So the Bantu are a product of the Niger Congo, and African Americans, transatlantic slaves, are a product of the Niger Congo. So we are kin folks. We one of us is called uh Oh, well, we are, we are, we are Ephraim, I should say. Now, what happened was there was a war in, uh, there was a war in Nigeria. It was called the Biafran, Biafran War, the Biafra War, right? The Nigerian Civil War, right? And this was a, a civil war between the Igbo and the uh, Yoruba. Mm. 
And the, the Yoruba comes from the Hebrew Jeroboam, and the, mm. which is a descendant of Ephraim. And then the Ebo would be Manasseh. So the Baafrin, or the, you know, Ba'i means two. Afra or Ephra is Ephra's, right? So the Baafrin war is the war between the two houses of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, I, I go into that a little bit more, and there's another there's another uh, lesson that I've done on that. I have to link it, or or maybe we'll make it a part two or something. But I I explain that a little bit more. I'm really just giving you a fast rundown of it now. But it, there is uh, a connection between there is a connection between uh, between the Yoruba and the and the uh, Yoruba and Jeroboam. Um. Uh, let me see. Yoruba Jews of Iberian, and then the Ninsula. It's a website that I use. Um. Maybe it's different. Ah. Uh, uh, Iberian Jews of the Yoruba nationality. There we go. Mm. So this is uh, some good reading for uh, somebody who, you know, if you have any interest in learning how to do this, if, if you were to, if you were to do your DNA, about 90% of us Americans in, in America, Western Hemisphere, it'll trace us back to either Igbo or Yoruba, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you know anything about Hebrew, um, the Yoruba would be a J, uh, this would be Jeroboam, Jeroboam, where Yoruba and Jeroboam are the same word. Mm -hmm. This is not the website though. The website is right here in Ireland. So Yoruba sons of Ephraim, right? The Yoruba people were descendants of the Canaanite tribe. Uh, it says, yes, these Yoruba, let me see. There's an actual, there is a clan among the Yoruba people called the Iju, which is believed to come from the word Hebrew or Jew. They are looked upon by the rest of the Yoruba for displacing evil light, characteristics mm -hmm. and traits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let me see, the Iberian Jews of Yoruba nationality. Um, Benai Ephraim, from Nigeria live among the Yoruba nationalities. Their oral history tells that the Benai Frame people came from Morocco because the Spanish Inquisition also was Hebrews being expelled out of black black Hebrews being expelled out of out of Spain and Portugal uh, uh, before we came to the western coast of Africa. After all the Jews were banished from the Iberian Peninsula sometime after 1492, this is the Spanish Inquisition. That was them kicking us, kicking our ancestors out of Spain, the Black Moors, right? Um, they speak a dialect of a mixture of Moroccan Arabic, Yoruba, and Aramaic. They are known by the Yoruba people as Imo Yo or strange people, strangers in the land. There goes that word again, that yeah. prophecy. Unlike mm -hmm. other African Israelite communities in Nigeria, the Bani Ephraim have a Torah, portions of which they keep in their sanctuaries. The name Lagos, born from the name capital Nigeria, meaning mm -hmm. lake, uh, lagoon, swamp, etc. Et Thousands of Black Jewish refugees from the Iberian, which is the, the uh, Spanish Inquisition, right? That's why the word Lagos is there, because it's a lake. Uh, Lagos gets the name from the Jews who, from Lagos, Nigeria, gets his name from the Black Hebrews who were mm -hmm. in Spain speaking Spanish at the time of the acquisition when they were yeah. kicked out. They moved into Nigeria and named that area Lagos, which is Spanish for lake. Thousands mm -hmm. of Black refugees. See, see how the language is, you cannot deny the power of knowing the language. No. Thousands of black refugees of, of, of Jews of Iberia resettled in environments of Lagos and Porto Novo, as well as Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, and in some 
Sao Tomo, either as slaves or outlaws. Some groups eventually made it deeper inland and became assimilated into one nationality or the other. The Benai Frame are living in irrefutable proof that this barely known history of mass Jewish resettlement into West Africa between 1492 and 1692, a 200-year nonstop return of Jews to Africa. Watch mm -hmm. this. This is this set of Moorish Jews, the Black Moors, refugee from the Spanish Inquisition, are not to be confused with more ancient Hebrew and Canaanite tribes that have been living in Nigeria and other countries for thousands of years. The Bantu migration started in negative. The Bantu migration started in 500 BC when those Hebrews from the Northern Kingdom, they decided to leave Assyria and go into a land that no man had dwelt. And they left out of Assyria and it took them a year and a half to cross the African continent. And they landed in the Niger Congo area. And that is where the Bantu migration started. So the Bantus and the African Americans come from the same group of Moorish, yes. Hebrew, Yoruba that were living in West Africa at the time. But Nay Ephraim did not, the Bana Ephraim did not settle with the Yorubas by accident or chance. They recalled that a body of their people had departed Canaan in the ancient times and settled in the present day Yoruba areas of Nigeria, just like their own group, the Nifrim, has settled in Iberia, Spain. So when it happened that they had to leave Spain in a hurry to protect their lives and freedom, those Moorish Iberian Jews sailed on their network of ships into Nigeria, near Lagos, among Yorubas, the relation by blood, their greater nationality. Mm -hmm. So these people, these Moors, these mm -hmm. Jews from the Spanish Inquisition, and these Yoruba, or Yoruba being the same as Jeroboam, these were all descendants of Ishma of, of, of Ephraim, Joseph. Where were the where were the where were the Judeans? The Judeans, the descendants of Judah. Or the, the, the kingdom of Judah, they were in Egypt. I mean, they were in Israel during the time of these migrations, and then they were scattered into Europe. That's why those Jews went into Europe and they came back with European features. Mm -hmm. Say that again, please. <laughs> now, the, so while all this stuff is going on with the with the Ephraimites, uh -huh. the, 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 the northern kingdom. All of these things going on with the Yoruba and the Spanish Inquisition, all these things were happening. Where were the Southern Kingdom Hebrews? They were still in Israel. And when Vespasian ended the Jewish state in 70 AD, a lot of those Hebrews from the Southern Kingdom, the Jews, they scattered into Europe and other parts of Europe. Some of those, some of those Judeans went into Europe. Other portions of those Judeans that were there during the sacking of Jerusalem in 70 AD by this nation, they traveled south and because they knew they had an mm -hmm. ally in Ethiopia. That's why, when you see, them Jews are smart. Them Israeli Jews are smart. That's why they went into Ethiopia in the 80s and brought those Ethiopian Jews out of Ethiopia. Because mm -hmm. some of those some of the Jews were scattered into Europe and they intermixed with you with the Europeans and they became white like the Jews you see today. Mm -hmm. Another portion of those Jews scattered down into Ethiopia because they knew that Solomon had an ally in Ethiopia. And that's why you call them Ethiopian Jews. Even further, some travel further south and that's where you get the Limba and also uh, there's a tribe in, in, in Kenya called the Kikuyu. And the Kikuyu yes. are also of the tribe of Judah. So, mm -hmm. so you have the Ethiopian Jews, tribe of Colossia. You have the Kikuyu in Kenya. You have the Maasai of East Africa that claim to be Jews. And then you also have tribes like the Limba 
who claim to be Levites or the priestly line of Jews, right? Oh. All these people going through Tanzania and Zimbabwe. These are all Jews. So where is Judah? The northern, the, the southern kingdom of Judah? The southern mm -hmm. kingdom of Judah is in Europe and in Africa. But the greater majority of the Hebrews were Ephraim, and that is mostly all of the transatlantic slaves and mostly all of the Bantu. A lot of history, but um, we are we are slowly, but as I say, slowly but surely, we are surely uh, getting it out there. All right, we're surely getting it out there. So let, let's pick this back up a little bit. Uh, still, we're asking ourselves: Where is the language ever used with Judah? Where is the covenant language ever used with Judah? This is Jacob giving the the language to Joseph and Ephraim, but he never speaks this to Judah. Genesis 48 and 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Hold on. I thought Manasseh was older than Ephraim. Why is Jacob putting the younger before the other? That's a pattern. Okay. Right? He said, they shall be mine as Simeon and Reuben are mine. Why is he calling them he could have he has 12 sons now. He could have used he could have used any name of any of his 12 sons, why would he use the eldest two sons? Hmm. Because it was the elder son, the eldest son that received the bulk of the father's birthright. Right. That's why he says, Ephraim is mine just as Reuben is mine. Mm -hmm. He could have said Manasseh and Ephraim. He, could have kept, he kept Simeon and, and, and Reuben in order. Why didn't he say just as Simeon and Reuben or just as Isaacar and Zebulun? Why did he use the eldest two sons? Because he was making it clear that I'm adopting Ephraim for the purpose of giving him my inheritance. Okay. Setting the younger over the older is a, a pattern. As for me, when I came from Badalaran, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way when we were yet a little way to go to Ephraim. And I buried her in the way of Ephraim, the same as Bethlehem. We talked about this as well. The precept is Matthew 2, 18, 14 to 16. And Israel, not Jacob, but Israel, and Israel stretched out his hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head. God in his hand whittling, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And, and Joseph said, he blessed them and said, uh, God for whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk. There's that same language. When did he use that language with Judah? He's giving, he, he's mentioning Abraham and Isaac for a reason because it was something specifically given to them. He could have said Abraham and Ishmael. He could have used any language if it wasn't important. The angel, an angel talked to Abraham, an angel talked to Sarah, an angel mm -hmm. talked to Isaac, an angel talked to Rebecca. An angel talked to Jacob, and I don't know if an angel talked to Rachel, but I mean, the angel is, there's always an angel, right? And let my name be named on them. The angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name, not the name Jacob, but the name Israel, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the mm -hmm. earth. A lot of patterns to unpack. Younger above mm -hmm. the elder. Jacob mentioned the birthright of Abraham and Isaac, of which he is the continuation. The angel revealed the inheritor in every generation. To Abraham of Isaac, to Rebekah of Jacob. Jacob also wrestled with an angel. And Joseph was given a vision by an angel too. All of, the angel, all of these generations are seeing angels. Let my name be named on them. This is why we are called Israelites and not Jews or Judeans. Mm -hmm. This is why Genesis 48 switches between the two names. A multitude in the midst of the earth is still that covenant language. Genesis 48. And Joseph saw his father's hand on Ephraim and it displeased him. So he was mad. He goes, no, here's my firstborn. But his father refused. Mm -hmm. He said, I know it, my son, I know it. 
he also shall become a people. Remember, Ishmael was given a people. Esau became a great people, right? He also mm -hmm. shall become a people. And he shall also be, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Mm -hmm. It was the seed of Ephraim that became the multitude of nations. That's why the in the Biafran War, Manasseh was just the Ebo. But the Ephraimites were all of those Bantu people, all of the West Indies, all of the African Americans, all of the Afro Latinos, all of the Black Hispanics. I mean, we just this is so many different all of the Black Indians. My mom's people are Blackfoot Indian. You know, um, I got pictures of my my people. My mom's people, uh, Blackfoot Indians, and one of my one of my great grandmothers, they, they said that she uh somebody one of her relatives died, and they did like an Indian seance in the backyard. All these oh. Blackfoot, these these Black Indians, all six foot tall, they came over to the house and they started chanting and doing a little Indian seance in the backyard when this person oh. died. Uh -huh. You know. These black Cherokees, these black Seminoles, the Moors, the black Muslims call themselves Lost Tribes Shabazz. I mean, all of these black Egyptologists that call themselves Kemet, not mm -hmm. knowing that Kemet is a Hebrew word, and the Egypt that they glorify is Joseph's Egypt. I mean, everything goes back to Joseph through Ephraim. All of these black theologians. Black theological movements, all of these black Nawabians, all everything goes back to Joseph through Ephraim. And I have a, I have a lesson even on that where I talk about every it, it all goes back to Joseph. It all goes back to Joseph. Let me see if I can find it. Ash Lanning, Fournay, and Maria. Um there's a lesson here, right here. It all comes back to Joseph. Everything you see, all these black expressions, all of this black theological movements, they all come back to Joseph. Why Islam? Why why did the Hebrews convert to Islam? Because they were living in West Africa, the Songhai, the Akan, the Ashanti people, they all mm -hmm. converted to Islam. The Yoruba and the Hausa converted to Islam because it was the language of commerce. So when they came over here, they were speaking, they were they were Muslim, speaking Arabic. All of this goes back to Joseph. So we have to we have to understand the significance of who Joseph was. Okay. He blessed them that day and said, In thee shall Israel bless. That's that language again. Israel shall bless the whole world. God. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. I want to highlight that real quick because we're might just have to jump down to where that is because uh, we're coming to the end of the class, end of the time. Uh, precept upon precept. So now, here we go. I think I think I've thoroughly proven the language, or I've thoroughly identified that there is a certain particular language that, that is attributed to the birthright. Precept upon precept. Chapter 1, 1 Chronicles 5, 1 and 2. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the, the, and the genealogy is not to be rec reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. And this is not my saying. This mm -hmm. is literally mm -hmm. what it says in Chronicles, in, in First Chronicles chapter 5. Okay. Let me see, where is this? Mm -hmm. so if, if, if I go to First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, look what it says. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn before as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. This, this just confirms that this just confirms that everything I said about the language of the birthright belonged to Joseph through Ephraim. 
Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches, we, we, we talk about Jesse and the branch coming out of Jesse, whose branches run over the wall. The wall is talking about the middle arch, the middle wall of partition, where Jesus, the branch, had to go and redeem the northern kingdom of Israel. He didn't have to redeem the southern kingdom of Judah. He had to redeem the northern kingdom of Israel. And this goes into Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, where it talks about uh, he divorced Judah. He divorced Israel, but he did not divorce Judah. So he had to redeem uh, Judah. I'm sorry. He divorced Israel and not Judah. So he had to redeem Israel. The archers have sorely grieved her and shot at him and hated him, but his bow bold in strength. Okay. Uh, the stone of Israel. Let me see. Uh, the blessing of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors, progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brother. He's talking about Joseph. This is an allusion to the middle wall of partition. The branch alludes not to Christ, but to Romans chapter 11, verse 32. This is how all of the families of the earth will be blessed. And so the last thing we're going to look at real quick is Romans 11, so we can prove how the families of the earth will be blessed. How are the families of the earth going to be blessed? So that's, I'm going to read through it real quick. Um, and we will, uh, how are the families of the earth going to be blessed? It says, I say then, have they, being the children of Israel, have they stumbled that they should fall? Yah forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. And another word for Gentiles, we could say, is goyim, because this is talking about real Gentiles and not the Hebrews who were called Gentiles. Because there's two sets of Gentiles. The first set were called Hellenes, which were Hellenized Israelites and were called uncircumcised by that which is circumcised. Uh, the Jew, the, the Judeans were calling the, the Southern Kingdom Hebrews were calling the Northern Kingdom Hebrews Gentiles because they were uncircumcised. But there was also true Gentiles, which were non-Israelites. All right, so this is talking about the non-Israelites. Okay. To provoke, it says, so uh, have, have they stumbled, have the Hebrews stumbled that they should fall? Yah forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is coming to the Goyim to provoke them to jealousy. So this was done to make us jealous of them and bring us back into our own covenant. So Yah knew that we were going to fall away. And in order to get us back into the covenant, he had to give the, the blessing to the Goyim to make us jealous. What he says here, now if the fall of them, of the Hebrews, be the riches of the world, the rest of the if basically saying, if the fall of the Hebrews gives riches or gives the heathen nations a chance to inherit this birthright and the diminishing of the Hebrews, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So if if our falling from grace gives them the grace to become grafted in, how much more blessed would they be if we were receiving our blessing? No. It's kind of like saying, um, you know, if you if you had followed my instructions, you would have gotten a bigger blessing than what you got. So because you didn't do it right the first time, you had to backpedal and 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 do it right the second time. Just imagine if you had done it right the first time, you would have gotten a bigger blessing. So here we are. We have fallen from grace. We've stumbled and fallen, and the Gentiles have come into the covenant. But if, 
if our fall gave them that much wealth or that much richness, how much more would our fullness give them? Those, those Jews right now are reaping all the blessings of being Israel, even though they aren't Israel. How do you think the world is going to benefit from us being back in our land with our identity and back in rulership? We're going to we're going to bless the world way more with our consciousness than we are with our unconsciousness. That makes sense. I mean, let me write that down here. We are going to bless the human family way more with our consciousness than we ever could with our unconsciousness. Yeah, they're they're being blessed right now while we are unconscious. But just imagine how much greater the world is going to benefit from us when we come into our fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, if by any means I may provoke, look at this. He says, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. Remember, he was, Paul was a Hebrew. Mm -hmm. I might save some of them. He wants to provoke them to what? To emulate, to emulate the, the, the heathens who are experiencing the blessings, right? That's why I say we want to be Judah, right? We want to be Judah because we are emulating the Jews. We want to be Judah because we're emulating the Jews. And guess what? It was in it was in us emulating Jews. It was the fact that we started to emulate Jews that we relearned the knowledge that was taken from us. My dad, uh, you know, he's he's deceased now, but my dad would always say, well, when you just want to pray to white Jesus, you think you're white. You just want to emulate, you want to emulate the white Jesus or whatever, right? And then when I became a Hebrew, he goes, well, you're still trying to emulate white people because you want to be Jew, right? So, I mean, for him, it was always about me trying to emulate my oppressor. But that's what Paul was saying. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. I mean, we got so far away from who we are and our, our identity and our heritage and our culture that when these other folks started to claim it and we started to emulate them, we started to realize, hold on, this actually fits us a lot more than it fits them. Maybe there's more to it than what we thought, right? We start to consider that maybe there is something more to this than we thought. Maybe there is something that we miss that, you know, you say, we actually fit the prophecies a lot better than they do, All right? So we started to emulate them, and that was when we became self-aware. He says, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Same thing he said here. We are going to bless the human family way more with our consciousness than we ever could with our unconsciousness. If the casting away of us, if Yah casting us away reconciles the whole earth, then how much greater will it be once we are received back into your know, when 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 the world finally recognizes us as who we are, it's going to be even greater for the world. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the first fruit, and if the, if the root is be holy, so too are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, like the tribes broke off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest the root of the fatness of the olive tree. So right here he says, 
some of the branches were broken off. These branches, these branches are the Northern Kingdom, we'll say, Northern Kingdom tribes. They were broken off. Okay. And then it says, and thou being a wild olive tree, the Goyim, right? The Goyim. <laughs> the Goyim, right here. They're the wild olive tree. Were grafted in among them, so they received the covenant. We'll say the blessings. Okay. The blessings. And with them partaketh of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. It says here, boast not against the branches. Don't tease, don't mock the, the, the northern kingdom tribes because they fell off. But if thou boast, thou beareth not the root, but the root bear thee. Meaning, because you're just, you're not in here so much, right? That would say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. If Yah would cast away his own people, if Yah would cast away his own people, what do you think he is going to do to you? Right? That's what he's saying. If, if y'all would do that to his own people, what do you think he's going to do to you? Know, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward the Gentiles, the going goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in, in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. He says that the Israelites can come back. The Israelites and come back to the covenant. Right? We can come back to the covenant. We can come back to the covenant. It says here, last little bit, it says, for if thou were cut off of the for if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, so y'all are wild and were grafted in contrary to the nature of the good olive tree, how much more shall these Hebrews, right, these Hebrews who are the natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? For I would not Brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest it should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So this is happening so that everybody can look and see what's going on right now with Israel. This is why, this is why all this stuff is going on in Gaza, because the fullness of the Gentiles, everybody's eyes, everybody's eyes gotta be looking at Israel. If, before Yah redeems his people. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come a, out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Not just Israel, but Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, the Israelites, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. So we are beloved because of our fathers. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So this 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 one chapter here, it's a lot to read. It's a lot to break down. Uh Romans 11 and starting at 11. But this is talking about how we are going to bless the rest of the human family right here. And it's the whole almost the whole chapter. It's like 11, Romans 11 to like 32. Romans chapter 11, verse 11 to 32. Um, this is how we're going to bless all the families of the earth. 
once we come back into our fullness and back into our consciousness, and once all of these people know who we are, you know, until the foot of the Gentiles we come in, once we are fully back in our kingdom, that is when we are going to bless the entire human family. Okay, need some more water. Um, questions? I want to open it up for questions before, before we dismiss. Thank you for taking the time. I just want to say that it's a lot to unpack. Yes, it is. It is. And and there was just more. I just I just had to stop because it's like gave myself like 90 minutes. And I was like, no, nah, this is gonna be way longer than 90 minutes. I could talk in 90 minutes just about this one scripture right here. And there's a lot more that I didn't even go into, like Hosea chapter one, Jeremiah chapter eight, second Peter, right, where he talks about uh the middle wall of partition, all of everything goes back to Joseph, though. That's, and that's the most important, that's the most important thing you gotta mention is in all 13 of these pages, everything goes back to Joseph and Ephraim. Everything. Even what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, I am not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. everything goes back to Joseph presentation. I, I thank you um, for your studies I'm thankful I haven't run into these uh, wannabes those wannabes that you mentioned and I really appreciate how you brought out about Sarah, Rebecca and Rachel yes, yeah, they, they were all they were all barren and they were all integral in making sure the birthright was passed down to the right person. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we can't ignore our wives because sometimes as men, we want things to sort of, I, I remember watching uh, Coming to America and the, the, the king was mad because his son wanted to go and find his street woman. And, you know, looking back on it now, I'm like, man, you know, maybe he should have married the girl that wasn't, you know, from New York because it just, it kind of just set a, a bad precedent in our minds. But anyway, um, the guy was like, well, who am I to change the tradition? And the, and, the, and the lady was like, well, I thought you were the king. I thought you were the king. So we have to learn sometimes to listen to our wives because we don't always have the full picture or we're blinded by the tradition mm -hmm. and Yah has a more divine purpose in mind, and we'll, we'll we'll miss that if we don't if we just sign off our wives. Now you know coming to America, of course, it really it really uh it, it's, it's hyperbole, right? Uh, how they had that girl acting barking like a dog and hopping on one leg, you know. But um, I guess you know that was that was the, the comedy of it, but. Mm. When you, when you think about it, he really chose to go to Babylon and and, and find mm -hmm. a girl that yes. was not, you know, <laughs> appropriate for him. I don't want to say a harlot, but I'm sure mm -hmm. her and that soul glow guy were not uh, under a marriage covenant or doing things the, the right way when he mm -hmm. fell in love with her. So, um there is a little element of comedy in it, but also it set a bad precedent for us because now we we see that and we want to reciprocate that. Kind of like the, the the TV series Martin, where him and Gina were living in sin for all those years, and we yeah. thought it was funny, but they were living in sin all those years, you know. Um, so I look at those stories now with with a double mind because you got to kind of sort of. I mean, everything is weighed up against scripture, but. Uh, you know, we definitely, definitely um, have to recognize patterns. You got to recognize um, the language of the covenant. And you have to question, why do you want to be Judah? If, if the reason for us wanting to be Judah was to be provoked to emulation, 
right? If by means I may provoke to emulation them, what does emulate mean? To 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 mock, to copy, to to pretend to be us. You know, you pretend to be a firefighter when you're a kid, and then you go to fire academy when you become an adult. You pretend to be a, a beautician or a hairstylist as a child, and then you become a beautician as an adult. We we emulate our parents when we drive in the car in the basket at the grocery store, and then we start driving. So there's nothing wrong with emulating. And here we are, the Apostle Paul is saying he wants his people, which are of his flesh, to emulate these Jews because it is in emulating these Jews that we actually unlock the mysteries, the hidden mysteries of our own identity. Mm. Okay. So I asked the question, I say, who told you you were a Jew? Mm -hmm. Who told you you were of the tribe of Judah? Maybe you just want to be Judah because the Khazar Jews have claimed Judah or Jesus the Jew. We gave you all Jew. Maybe that's why. You know, who knows? But according to all the, the, the physical evidence, we are, as far as I can tell, we are of the tribe of Ephraim. Yes. But that, that's all I have. Uh, any, any more questions? Um, I was trying to take notes um, as you were speaking. I want to make sure I, I took a correct note in this. When you were talking about the Bantu migration, are you saying that uh, based on that and the transatlantic slave trade that was primarily or that was only um, we were we were brought over from from that uh, migration that was from the house of Ephraim? So, oh. so a lot of, a lot of, there are a lot of answers to that, right? Um, we were over here even before the, the, the transatlantic slavery, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of us were aware, brought over here as transatlantic slaves, but the Moors were here long before. Um, and not everybody on the Western coast of Africa was, Ephraim. There are also Jews there. There's a whole uh, story about the kingdom of Judah that's there, that was there. You know, so um, there's a lot of intermixing. There's a lot of um, cross, you know, confirmation bias, if you will. Um, but what the most important thing to remember is, it says, Take the stick of Ephraim and the stick of Judah and make them one in your hand. Mm -hmm. And if the stick of Judah and the stick of Israel become one in your hand, who gets the name? Is the name is the name Judah or is the name Ephraim? The name, of course, is Ephraim. And um, what, what I can show you real quick is Ezekiel 37. And that's, that's around verse... Uh, uh, the reunion of the, re the reunion of Judah and Israel. It says, "For Judah, uh, take the stick, take the one stick, and write upon it for Judah. Uh, take the stick of, take one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, and then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of, the stick of Ephraim." And for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in a hand. Mm -hmm. So he, he says it again, saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I would take the stick of Joseph, which, look at this, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows. And will put them with him, and even with the stick of Judah, but it doesn't say whose hand is in. The stick of Judah is going into the hand of Ephraim because everything is combined into one stick. Who's going to hold the stick? And they shall become one stick, and they shall become one in my hand. Yes, and I will make them one nation. In the land upon the mountains of Israel or Judah, Israel, 
and one king shall be king over them all. And they shall no more be called two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms at all anymore. So we're going to be combined into one people, and that nation is going to be called Israel and not Judah. So we want to make Judah, we want to give Judah preeminence over Israel, but the name that Yah gave us was Israel and not Judah. That's why those Jews in Israel, they, they don't call themselves Israelites. Why don't they call themselves Israelites? Well, they sure don't. Israelis. Israelis. What, where, is that, where does that come from? Where does, <laughs> can't find the word Israeli anywhere. Mm. They've made up a word because they know they can't call themselves Israelites. Okay. <laughs> if, if it was just a nominal thing, then... Why wouldn't they call themselves Israelites? If they wanted to prove to us that they were the real Hebrews, why wouldn't they call themselves Hebrew Israelites? Yeah. They they most certainly could call themselves Hebrew Israelites, but they call themselves Israelis. Why is there a distinction? Mm. And the answer to that is simple. They are distinguishing themselves from the Hebrew Israelites. Okay. Same reason why Egypt and Israel have a peace treaty, right? Because before Egypt was went to war with Israel, why did they stop fighting? Because they had a, they had a conversation, and and Israel Ben Gurion told the Prime Minister of Egypt, he goes, "Look, you can tell the world that the original Hebrews were black, but if you if you give them the game on us." You give the game up on yourself because you tell the world that the Hebrews were black. The first question they're going to ask is, if the Hebrews were black, then how could a, a black Moses hide in an Egypt full of Arabs? So if you tell the world that the Hebrews were black, you also have to tell the world that the Egyptians were black. And they don't want to do that. But there's so much money involved with Egyptology and Egypt studies and all the, the money they get from putting stuff in the museums, all the Hollywood movies where they mm. cast Venezuelan and South African actors. If the if they if the Egyptians are black, the Hebrews are black. Mm -hmm. And that's why they have a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. I, I digress. I mean that's that's just, you know, I can go on tangents. Uh, any any more questions? Anything? Uh, if not, we can we can bring it to an end. I know some of them might be a little later on than I am. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to numbers, and we're gonna lower the arc. Um. All right. Um. So. You know, there's a there's a scripture where it says the ten thousands of uh uh David has slain his I mean Saul has okay. slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Uh -huh. You guys remember that verse? Look at this real yeah. quick. It says, His glory is like the firstlings of the bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. They are the tens of thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Mm. So this description here, if I blow it out, it's now, look at this. Um, they are the tens of thousands. See that? Revavo? Tens of thousands? Mm -hmm. Revavo is, is uh, Ephraim. Here it is right here. Revavo. Revavo. The tens of thousands of, of, of Ephraim, Revavo Ephraim. Now look at this. If I go back, that's Deuteronomy. If I go to Numbers, and look what it says here. Shavu Yahweh Revavot Alfe Israel. The same word, Revavot. Tens of thousands of Israel. Yes. Just, just, just further showing you that. Israel or the northern kingdom or Ephraim is where the, the covenant comes from the name Israel. That's why it was called the, the northern kingdom of Israel. It wasn't called the northern kingdom of, of Ephraim. It was called the northern kingdom of Israel. All right. So, uh, Uve Nu Kor. 
croire, vous venez de croire, yo, amer, he spoke, yo, amer, shuva, yahua, revavo, a fait Israël. Alléluia. It's called yo, made. Alléluia. 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 C'est là. C'est là. Mm. Um, I appreciate all of y'all who came onto the call, and I hope that I was able to um, give you something to chew on for a while. Yes. <laughs> yes, cool. More uh, to study. <laughs> yes, ma'am, more to study. I can also give you this uh, file. I don't mind sharing with you. Um, I, I don't know if you are, Cassandra, if you're in the... Uh, the the glory to the righteous chat. I am. Okay, I will put it in the chat so you guys can uh, pick it up from there. Okay. That's it. All right. Okay. Uh, and, and you can have it to to study and and read over if if you like and uh add to it or or take from it you know whatever you whatever you want and uh if you have any questions throughout the week you can always call me or text me or ask me. But I appreciate y'all coming on the call. You could have been anywhere in the world but chose to spend the first part of your Shabbat with me, and I'm I'm humbled by it. I appreciate it. So with, with that being said, ladies, uh, I wish you good night and see you guys later on, maybe on the Tuesday call. Okay. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.